Part two on ITL on stereo bus compression. We're going to do a mashup of two of your most requested, of our most requested guests. You're going to enjoy that. Um, updated on some new MixFest information. You're at the place, Pensado's place. Yeah. Electricity's in the air, Herb. I you know what I'm talking about. Everywhere. Oh, man, I'm telling you. You know, one of the things um, that I don't like about this whole process is there's so many names I see on Facebook, and and uh, they're just names. We're gonna we're gonna put a face to a lot of these names here real soon, aren't we? That's gonna be that's, fun. That's gonna be great. Yeah. Not only the uh, we're gonna share some time with them, but uh, we're gonna be accessible to you guys. And we want to meet you. This isn't one of those stiff things, you know. We're going to have a planned opportunity for you to come by and talk to us, hang out with us. Party pick our bit. brains, yeah. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Uh, I'm pretty excited about it. It's going to be cool. Um, so as usual, you know where to meet us and, and get, get in touch with us. There's our page up on the screen. Facebook, Twitter, and our YouTube page is the place you need to go. As to MixFest, um, again, we couldn't thank you more for the responses. It's just been incredible. Um, we're going to have a good time. Uh, again, in our Q&A, just uh, Eric Valentine, who is one of our most requested shows ever, and you're gonna, we're going to see him in a little bit. Um, and uh, Jean-Marie Horvat is going to be talking about logic and teaching about logic. Uh, Dave's going to do his thing. You get to mix along with him. Uh, I'm going to be there. Drew's going to be there. Um, all the good stuff. Gift we're giving, bags. We're giving Drew away, aren't we? We are giving Drew away. The, <laughs> You're welcome, America. The thing, You're welcome. The thing we haven't been able to find is the right size gift bag. <laughs> but we will. Uh, awesome. As usual, our, our sponsors, Vintage King, our, our buddies there, we, we, we thank them. Um, mm. And also the other folks who've, who've gotten involved in this. Abbott has gotten involved. Yeah. Uh, McDSP. Yeah. Shout out to Anthony. In big way, Anthony from Avid, Ralph and Colin from DSP, uh, our girl Maureen from uh, Naris. from from Naris, who's just been incredible. Um, so um, we're excited. Yeah. Uh, we want to see. I just I just found out some of the things that uh, Colin's given away and yeah. Avid's given away. This this gift basket is. I, well, I'm there's, so glad the law. I'm not gonna mention names yet, but I'm just glad the lawyers got it worked out, so I'm eligible. Oh, cool. Because I'll be <laughs> using this stuff. <laughs> Absolutely. Uh, obviously, you can get the information about tickets and stuff at our website, pensadosplace.tv. You want to go there. You see the page up on the screen. I think it's actually forward slash MixFest. But if you go to our website, it's there. There's student pricing available. We're seeing a lot of people take advantage of that. We're going to have fun. Uh, thanks again for all the requests to bring it to different cities and do other things. Give us a minute. We're trying to breathe. We're going to do that. But a lot of, a lot of fun. Um, Dave, you want to take us to an ITL? Yeah, I just want to remind people, a lot of people don't know how we came up with the name Pensadosplace.tv for the website. Uh, and? Well, TV stands for Trawick Vision. Pensado.Trawick uh, Vision. Oh, I, man, I forgot. Yeah, yeah, no, I got to no. go talk to Trawick and see what he came up with. Yeah. <laughs> man, uh, last week we did uh, single band compressors, and uh, this week we're doing multi band continuation. Uh, inspired by an article I read on uh, by Mike Thornton over at uh, Sound on Sound. You guys go so much information Sound on Sound. Run over that magazine and then don't don't forget tape op and mix. Great resources. Uh, so it's self-explanatory. We're going to finish that up today. Hit it, Will. Wow, what a coincidence! It's the same shirt I wore last week, Will. You've got a different shirt on. We've got a different dog in the room. That's good. Anyway, this is part two of our uh, What the Heck to Stick on Your Stereo Bus uh, ITL. Uh, you'll see on your screen the T-Racks. I've grown to really like this. A um, uh, couple of buddies of mine use it religiously, and um, uh, I, I've gotten rough mixes with it on it. I really, really, really like it. Um, I don't have a copy of it, so I can't show it to you, but I'm showing you kind of a, a typical setting that Mike Thornton, uh, from the SOS article that inspired this ITL, these are some of his settings. Okay, let's jump in. Um, first, we're going to start with the uh, 
the L3 Ultra Maximizer. It's a, it's a it's a an L2 with a little more horsepower. Maybe some other time, but damn, I wish you were mine. We're, we're, we're working on the track that uh, Pat Thrall and I did for Dream. Okay, that's the, um, that's the L3. Pretty impressive. Uh, now, this is... Um, I, I don't remember Mike Dean, when uh, Kanye West, engineer, mixer, producer, mastering engineer, Mike talked about this plug-in. This is the uh, ML4000 from Colin and, and Rich over at uh, McDSP. It's a beast. Uh, this this plug-in takes a little time to kind of get to know, but it's it's not that difficult. It looks like a lot of things going on, but uh, it makes total sense once you delve into it. Maybe some other time, but damn, I wish you were mine. I want to remind you. Uh, last week, I told you these aren't like I didn't. I didn't spend a lot of time tweaking these for this particular song. Don't use this ITL and listen to the sonics of what's going on to make a decision. Just, just know that these <clears throat> are giving you different options to play with. This thing can get a lot louder if you want it to. Great plug-in. Very underrated. Uh, I, I spoke about this last week. This is the. Um, uh, L3 multi maximizer um, looks like you get one, two, three, four, five bands. Um, the L316 has got 16, I guess, and it, it's 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 a little uh, intensive in terms of resources resources usage, but this is a good compromise. I love this plug-in. I'm I'm starting to use it more and more and more. Maybe some other time. But damn, I wish you were mine Kick drum a little too squashed on that one, but uh, you get the idea. And then, um, last but not least, this guy from uh, UAD. I'm learning this one too, but I, I included it because it's got kind of a sweet sound to it. I don't know, there's something about it I really like. Uh, this particular setting I haven't tweaked quite right, but it's pretty good. You can do a lot with this thing. I'm, I'm, like I said, I'm just now learning it. Don't judge what I'm doing here. Uh, I printed most of these. Uh, I'm going to show you something, just so you'll you'll know I'm not crazy. There's 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 a couple of things squaring off here and there. Uh, looks like, but not too bad. You can see actually it's not squaring off hardly at all. But uh, a little squared off here and there is okay. Uh, the main thing is, is we've talked about the loudness wars things, and that battle's over. That ship has sailed. The loudness won. So you gotta, you gotta, you gotta compete on the radio. Um, you uh, you need to be aware of these. Uh, how many did I do? Ten or so. Uh, they're going to allow you to, to compete, um, and mastering guys some, and, 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 and us mixing guys, sometimes we have a little bit of conflict about whether to take them off, leave them, leave them on. I'm of the opinion that if you, if, you, if you really like what you're doing and it's very musical, leave it on. 
If you've got a good relationship with your mastering guy, send them both ways. Let your client decide which they like best. And if you're dealing with mastering guys that don't like to do that, find another mastering guy. It's just that simple. All the guys I work with enjoy, um, you know, trying to get you the best thing possible, and they don't mind working a little harder. But um, spend time with all these. They're all, trust me, they're all a little bit different. On the, on the multi-bands, my favorite is, uh, I go to a lot, uh, the Mac DSP, the, uh, the Waves. Man, on the multi-bands, I like them all. They're all kind of different, um, and I can't find a pattern yet to tell you about. But uh, if, if, if you missed last week's ITL, run back and grab that. That's where we talked about the, uh, the single bands. And if you want me to go into more detail about any of this, uh, if you want me to go into detail about one particular one or uh, whatever, let me know. Uh, we do this for you guys. I learn more than you guys learn, but, but, but uh, if, you, if you need more detail, just hit me up. Uh, just remind Will over at Pensada's Place. I'm, I'm there every day, too. So uh, let's try something different. Back to you, Herb. Ah, back to me. Wasn't that a good idea? Very cool. Good job. <laughs> now, Dave, to you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you go, you go, you guys. We got a great audience. We just, we just act the fool, and they just, they keep watching. You guys are great. Hope you enjoyed that ITL. I, I, I learned a little bit, and um, um, expand on that. You know, like, like I always tell you. You know, pull some of those things up. I wasn't necessarily trying to give you uh, um, anything other than a, an introduction to the fact that there are a lot of options and, and almost all of them excellent 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 so um that was weird coming back to you i don't know why dave said that uh, dave's a different kind of guy uh but you know what um i'm excited about about the guest segment coming up it's a new first for pensada's place mm -hmm. where uh we we get a lot of requests to um re-air episodes Almost all of those requests coming from Will Thompson, but <laughs> that counts, doesn't it? <laughs> so based on Will's request to, to re-air a couple of episodes, uh, we're going we're gonna to bring you uh, excerpts from Jean-Marie's interview and Eric Valentine. And uh, coincidentally, they're going to be the, the stars of Mixed Fest coming up and uh, a lot of good information. So this is a little tease for that. Almost all of you know this for sure, but I'm going to remind you because I'm so proud of my friend. Jean-Marie has done Destiny's Child, he's done Beyonce, including the live album. He, we recently just worked on the Keisha Cole record together yeah, with Ron Fair. Right. Yeah. Um, uh, Justin Timberlake, T.I. Yeah, Justin's... Uh, you know who we forgot? Family. A little, a little... A little king of pop named Michael Jackson. Oh, yeah. Uh, <laughs> There's name dropping today, aren't we, can, Dave? Can hey! You, uh, what should they check out to, to know the classic Jean-Marie sound? Well, you know, Dave, it's kind of funny because a lot of people don't know what I've done, you know, mm -hmm. when they say, wow, you did that? Wow, mm -hmm. you did that? Like the Trey song, Say Ah, it mm -hmm. took almost six, oh, seven months. People didn't that. know I mixed that. People didn't know I mixed Reba McIntyre. No, I didn't know you mixed Reba McIntyre. Reba McIntyre, yeah. Holy cow. And, you know, the reason why Teddy hired me is because I used to be a metalhead that was into rap music. I mean, I'm a city kid. Right. I, mean, I grew up in the city. Right. So um, I made the drum smack, the ones and two, make it grime and make it feel right. Let me ask you a question. <laughs> you said you make the drums knock. You're, you're, you're known to a lot of us that do this for a living mm -hmm. as the cat to check out and make sure that when we see your name on a record that we're not getting totally creamed by what you do. <laughs> give me, if possible, if you yeah. can't, give me like a little quick 10-second take on how you get the drums to knock. Philosophically, what's your approach to getting the drums to knock? And I'm glad you brought the, the philosophy. That's what it is, the philosophy of mixing. It's like a philosophy of life. It's the way you walk and talk. I don't start with the drums first. Really? Because I think what people tend to forget is that when you listen to music, you listen to melody and the structure of it. Mm -hmm. The ones and twos, that's like, it's like, you know, it's like a, a book. Mm -hmm. You know, you get the, you know, you look at the ones book. Which, the ones and twos, the downbeat. No. Right. And the vocal is really what sells the mix. So I start with either 
percussions first with the vocals or vocals and then keyboard stuff and the last thing I do is drums. Are you more informed then once you've done the rest of the stuff? Yeah. For so so yeah. the drum sounds at that point in time, yeah. you've got more more sense of what they should be to make them. Know. I do. I do a lot of enhancing. You know, it's like what what me and you are known for. We're boutique mixers, and it's like you know if you, they come to us because we're the last resort to to make it happen, make it pop, make it crack, and the philosophy of enhancing the sounds is mm -hmm. what we're known for. And it's mm -hmm. like, yeah, I try to. I try to beat out the last mix. The last mix yeah. was my worst mix. The new mix is the hot mix, and yeah. I just keep doing it that way. When I think Jean Marie, I think Aratones. How the hell do you get that massive drum sound low end out of ash can? Dude, it's about the philosophy of it. If you can make those mugs sound great on those Aratones, you got a hot mix. Correct me if I'm wrong, but you're not hearing a whole lot below 200, yes, are you? Yes, you can. How do you do that? It's, Explain it, that to it's me. It's basically, all right. You're a guitar player like uh -huh. I am, right? We're musicians, first and foremost. How do you pick a guitar amp? Well, listen to the calls of the speakers from, mm -hmm. from, the, from, the, from like the Bogner or a Marshall or a Diesel head. Uh -huh. It's the same thing. It's like when you listen to it, it's like when you have the vocals sitting just right there and then you, you get that kick drum in there, you can dial it in because it, it fluctuates the frequency or farts out. The, these things don't fart out. You, it takes a lot of pressure. I think we it's just had a Beavis and Butthead moment, but I'm not going to go for it. <laughs> it's just like, to me, I just think it, as, long as, as long as you hear that fluctuation coming out, mm -hmm. you can drive it. Drive them puppies, man. Don't be, you know, be, be get at it. Matt in the chat room wants to know how you keep the bass sound to stay consistent. Oh. Um, Watch it to the later. Yeah, it's basically, it, it's, it's all about... Uh, a carpenter's toolbox almost. It's like you gotta make it, you gotta make it work. You know, it's like. What's your go to compressor on bass? Out, out of the box, then the box? I don't. You don't compress your bass? Mm -mm. It's all about balancing. I actually add more. If more you bass. weren't using our tones, do you think you could hear the bass? And then compress it more. <laughs> <laughs> you, know, you, you know what it is? It's like, you know, it's like going back to the philosophy again. It's like, you know, uh, it's about how the, the song attracts to me. So it's like I might have the kick drum come before the bass when I EQ stuff, mm -hmm. but normally, the, pretty much I think the last thing, the last process is is the bass because that takes up the most frequency of the speaker. Uh, what's your favorite compressors on kicks? Take it, Jamie. You got five seconds. All right, Jamie. We really appreciate that response. No, I'm kidding. Go ahead. <laughs> you know what? Uh, it, it all it all varies, Dave. I mean, I love the 160 XT across the snares. That's hot because yeah, that attack. Uh, the but you know, you know, I tell you guys, I really, I really love Trans X. Trans X, man. Waves. That, that Trans Waves plus, you know, obviously we're Waves guys. Jason but Joshua hit me to that. Oh, I've been using that for like the last two years, and it just gives it enough. But ultimately, guys, it's really whatever, whatever, whatever's clever, you know? It's like One the, last the, thing. The, the stress is actually hot. One too. last thing. This is a good way to tie this all up. You showed me parallel compression a yeah, long yeah, time ago. Yeah. That's a good way to have your cake and eat it too because you can preserve the integrity Absolutely. of the original sound, but you can compress a copy of that sound, get get what you want and add that back in. Thank Brother. you. What a pleasure. I love you guys, man. Love you, you, Dave. Thank you so much, man. God you bless you. We show. <laughs> We're hoping. Every time I work on a song, a rock song in particular, I pull up, no one knows, and I just quit. I just, you ask me, you get that call. Is, is Home Depot hiring this week? I can't get this thing. But man, uh, just uh, a quick question about that song. Uh, what if, what effects, if any, are on the vocal on that? I mean, it's just... Is it how you recorded it? Is it the mic? What makes that vocal just... It's not loud, but it just... it just Is it a combination of EQ? It just cuts through the mix. It's like right in my face, and it feels like he's dry. Yeah, well, um... Finally a question. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Eric. Um, there was something a little bit unique about how all the vocals were tracked on that record. We, we used two microphones all the time while he was singing. We had sort of like a hi-fi mic and a lo-fi mic. And so there's a C12 setup and there was a little um, Altec 633A salt shaker mic, this really junky old dynamic microphone that's, that's very lo-fi. And so, um, you know, so ultimately in the mix you can play, play with the combination of those oh, two mics cool. to sort of either make it more mid-rangey and cut through more and sort of a little s smaller so it's not like taking up so much of the sonic space 
Um, or if you need it to be more hi-fi, you can just do it by blending instead of sort of trying to wrench it with an EQ. Oh, that's cool. Um, was there an effect? It sounds dry. Um, you know, I, I actually, I don't know exactly what was done on the mix. I actually don't, I, I didn't mix that record. Okay. So that it was, um, the record was mixed um, very, very well by, uh, by Adam Casper. Oh, wow. Um, you know, yeah, yeah. He did a great job on the record. This would be a good time to let everybody know. Um, um, a lot of the things we're talking about today, Eric has gone on uh, Gear Sluts and shared a lot of stuff. He's got some cool pictures of, uh, of his, uh, some of his techniques. So uh, say hello to my friend Jules when you go there. Tell him we sent you. And uh, go check out Eric's Q&A on Gear Sluts because there's a lot of great information uh, on there also. Um, you just finished the Slash album, uh, 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 incredible. And um, how, uh, tell me your miking technique for that record. Um, like for the guitar? For the for the drums. For the drums, okay. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, uh, that one. Um, I was trying to push things back towards some more minimalistic miking. Um, you know, I was lucky enough to have. Um, uh, Josh Freeze playing drums for the majority of the record, mm -hmm. and he's a very accommodating drummer. He's just he's an, an amazing player. He's pretty much comfortable playing any drum kit, set up any way I want. I can put microphones anywhere, and he'll figure out how to navigate around them without mashing my microphones. And so it it makes it possible for me to get drum sounds with maybe four or five microphones instead of like twelve or sixteen microphones, you know, um, which is easy to um, to rely on, you know, it, it's easy to get in the habit of doing that. Um, mm -hmm. But you think of the drums as, as the drum, you think of it as one instrument rather yeah. than a collection of 30 instruments. Yeah, I, it, it always sounds, it always sounds better and sounds like a better representation of the drum kit when you can pull it off with fewer mics. Like on, on that, that record, so probably the best example is the song By the Sword. And, that is just a straight up classic over under style miking technique, you know, where there's um, a mic that sort of hovers over the, the hi hat and the rack tom and the snare drum. Mm -hmm. There's a mic that sort of hovers over the, the floor tom and looks across the drum kit and it also picks up sort of the attack of the kick drum. Um, and then I had, so those were C12As. I had a, uh, a 67 out in front of the kick drum just a couple feet away. Um, and then so that's really the sort of foundation of the sound. And then the other thing that I was doing on the drums on that record, I wanted to create sort of um, a crunchier kind of unique ambience for the drums. And so I had 157 right in the middle of the, the drum kit that was split and went to two Ampeg Jet guitar amps. And, um, and I put those in the chamber at my studio. And so the whole time while he's playing, um, the sound is sort of being amplified in this reverb chamber and so you get all this sort of distorted spring reverb that I would sort of blend in just a little bit and there's... Oh, the guitar, you use the spring reverb from the guitar amp? Yeah. yeah. And, and, so. and was there any amount of delay in, 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 in the process that kind of made things widen or it stayed pretty solid? Yeah, I mean, it was, it's mostly, the mics on the amps are really close, so, oh. you know, um, so and the sound gets there immediately from yeah. the microphone, so, so th there isn't, isn't really any delay, it just, it just creates sort of a weird, you know, a peculiar mid-range and ambience for the drums that helps it sort of stand out against some of the other stuff. So far, I'm kind of picking up a trend um, that you, you, you like a distortion for the harmonic content of it that you seem to add a lot of that back into a lot of things you do um, is, that a, is that a fair statement I, I do I, I think I think sometimes distortion it's better is, than EQ yeah it's essential to, to make music um, feel sort of exciting and sonically pleasing Eric how do you balance the use of the drum be drum umbrella over the drums as a whole let's say you're adjusting it for the snare wouldn't that affect your kick tone as well yeah, that's a good good question, and and probably uh, the biggest reason that I don't use it all of the time. Um, you know, if if uh, I, I I am mostly adjusting it for just the snare drum, and there have been a couple times where it has, um, you know, caused unfavorable effects like on the floor tom or the kick drum. You know, creating sort of a low mid resonance that is not really flattering for the kick or the tom uh, floor tom, and so. 
Um, you so don't that need can, those anyway. Just don't. Uh, use yeah. Them. <laughs> um, so yeah, that has been tricky, but you know, um, I'm getting more and more used to it, and it seems to really be um, the most effective when it's really a minimalistic thing. I've been really into these one mic drum sounds lately, and the drumbrella has been a huge, huge part of that. I'm, I'm going to ask Eric, uh, Eric about a sound, and he's going to tell me a record that he's done that he think will be instrumental for our audience to listen to in terms of a reference. Cool. It's not necessarily his favorite sound, but something that would be good for our audience Love to listen it. to. Love it. Uh, vocals. Um, I'd say uh, w one of my favorites is the vocal sound on Walking in the Sun. I mean, I, I just, in general, I just love yeah. Steve Har Harwell's voice, yeah. and that particular one was a little different. We used a Coles 4038, and um, I, just ha I just feel like it had a really classic sound that sort of suited the vibe of the song and really was flattering for his voice, you know. And okay. Acoustic guitar. Um, I think my favorite acoustic guitar is, uh, is on the recent Rejects record, um, on the, the, the title track, When the World Comes Down. Um, I'd recently got a pe pair of um, Shep's 221Bs, and, um, and I did a, a stereo miking of the guitar, and it was the, it's the only time I've recorded an acoustic guitar where I didn't EQ it when it was recorded, I didn't EQ it when it was mixed, and there was no EQing on it in the mastering. Wow. <laughs> so it is, it is literally that microphone on a guitar directly to the final thing. Drums. Um, drums. Let's see. <laughs> <laughs> um, boy, that's a tough one. You know, dr uh, drums are a particular passion for me, and there's a, there's a lot of stuff in a lot of different directions that that I, I really really like. Um, you know, probably, um, yeah, I mean, I, I really like the drum sound on the Queen's record. That, that was an opportunity to do something that was really unique, you know, um, recording the cymbals separately um, and um, being able to keep all the mics a little bit further away to the drum kit. There was, there was really nothing, nothing on that drum kit where there was a mic an inch or two away from a drum. We just didn't do that. Wow. Um, okay. Um, um, by the way, Paul Tingen on, in the SOS did a great article on the slash uh, drum techniques. Uh, guitar, rock guitar, distorted guitar. Uh, distorted guitar. Um, let's see. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that, that record has some good guitar sounds. They were tough to get, though. Um, There's a picture on Gear Sluts of your, of your miking technique for that. Yeah, record. yeah. I think I would, I would go for um, the, that first um, self-titled Third Eye Blind record. Just, Kevin is just, he's such a that, pleasure to work with. That's a classic with. record. Man, his guitar sounds, and so much of it is him. Just his alternate tunings and this peculiar sort of music man guitar, and his whole thing was just amazing, you know. Okay, uh, width. Because you, you're, you're known for drums, you're known for width, you're known for a lot of things. But um, That one's... That one's a little complicated. Uh, this has come up. Um, I mean, I think the quickest answer for that is um, that um, I really feel like uh, a lot of it is inherent in the arrangement itself, being able to place instruments against each other that um, have a contrast that sort of widen out the image. But for me, the sort of like having clarity and detail and width in a mix is all about EQ and it's what I call voicing, just voicing the instruments so mm -hmm. they own their own place and don't interfere with each other and don't overlap in ways and that's what the puzzle is about. It's, it's um, making an instrument sound good by itself when it's sort of relegated to a particular part of the frequency spectrum and still sound natural but still fit into the overall puzzle. You know? That's why we call it mixing. Uh, bass guitar. Bass guitar. Um, I love the uh, bass guitar on uh, the first Smash Mouth record. There's a song called The Fonz that has a really, really great distorted bass sound on it. I'll, I'll go for that cool. one. Cool. I, I got to go back and listen to that one. Um, what, what song is the most non-traditional, unique sounding song that, you, that someone can listen to? Um, non-traditional. Uh, let's see. There's a really unique song on um, the first 
uh, death ray record called Baby Polygon. People should listen to that record. That's a great record. Um, that one started with elements that they had recorded on a demo version themselves, and then we sort of, you know, brought it into the studio and expanded on that. But that one has a bunch of really unique elements, and as far as like width and depth and stuff, it's um, things sort of fell into place on that one. It's it's a nice one. Auto harp. <laughs> Auto harp. <laughs> um, yeah. Let's see. Auto harp. Um, Auto harp has had a couple, couple moments. The the most notable one is on "How's It Gonna Be," the the Third Eye Blind song. Um, it it had a a reemergence on the uh, the Rejects record, All American Rejects record. Um, that song, The Wind Blows, there's, uh, there's these big sort of auto harp strums on, on the wind <laughs> Just blows. messing with you. Well, man, listen, I appreciate you, uh, you sharing all that stuff with us. I'm, I'm, I'm going to go back and rewind the tape and go listen to a lot of those myself again. Um, coming, man. Yeah, my pleasure. pleasure. Thanks, thanks for having me. a good time. Is this what we say goodbye? Uh, we've got some stuff to do, but yes. Okay. Man, thank you so much, Eric. I really appreciate my it. My pleasure. Will you come back in the future? Sure, yeah, of course. It'd be great. Man, I've seen that interview so many times, and every time I see it, I'm just like, I want to be Eric Valentine so bad. Yeah, Jean Marie. Jean Marie, too. Uh, Jean, Jean and I work in similar ways, and, 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 and we're a lot alike, but Eric, Eric's just, he's just on another level. I love them both, love them both. And you're going to get to ask them uh, tons of questions. We'll stay as long as you want. and. Uh, I'm going to be at the head of the line for both those guys. <laughs> That's cool. And, and me too. Um, so, you know, make sure that uh, you know where to get us. You get to our website, pensadosplace.tv forward slash mixfest. Um, student tickets available. Get to our website. Um, it's going to be a ball, as you just saw with Eric and John. Good stuff there. Going to get a chance to hang with Dave. Yeah. Cool gift bags, cool gifts, lots of fun, lots of education. It's going to be a party. Uh, November 12th, coming up. It's at the Los Angeles Recording School's main theater, in the movie theater, stuff up on the big screen. Um, so we're going to have fun. Um, can't wait. Um, Dave, let's, let's go home. Okay. Um, guys, look forward to seeing you. This is coming up quicker. It seems like time's just flying by. <laughs> And I uh, uh, appreciate everybody that's already signed up. Uh, tickets are flying out. And um, I want to say something about Pensado's Place. <clears throat> .tv, I'm real proud of that. Will and the guys have done an incredible job on the website. Very proud of it. It's going to expand and grow into a lot more things. So uh, it's going to be a place where you can hang out uh, on the internet. And then we're going to see you soon at MixFest. Thanks, guys. <laughs>